Hey everyone, Wayne Fox back with another Lightroom video. I think my voice is finally back to normal. Feeling pretty good, but I'm a little short of breath still, so hopefully I won't make too many big deep breaths into the mic here. And I still cough once in a while, so you might see a couple of jump cuts as I try to get things working again. Anyway, I did a video on keywords not too long ago, and I talked about how you could organize them in a much better way, get rid of your duplicates, have a nice hierarchical list, and how it also made it easier to add keywords when you're out on a location. Not a real popular video, but uh, I think there are some people that really did appreciate it. And a couple of the viewers mentioned they'd really like to see a video on how I organize my files. I guess they noticed it over in the sidebar. Thought, well, yeah, that'd make a pretty good video. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know which, uh, it's a little more complicated than that. And I thought, well, I need to talk a little bit about my philosophy on the library module in general and talk about how it evolved. Uh, and that will help you understand how I got to where I am and also how I use the power of the library module in my workflow. Now, I've been using Lightroom since the original public beta. So this is basically the version 10 for me because uh, I would call public betas our version zeros. And my work or my... Uh, structure has, has varied over the years, but about five or six years ago it, when it finally settled in, and that's because I finally understood if I use the library module, I think the way that it's intended to be used, uh, it, it really keeps things organized and it's very easy to keep things organized. And the real cool part is you'll never lose a file. Uh, the most common problem I have uh, about Lightroom, I get people that call me at my store and they're having a problem with Lightroom and almost always is, well, I can't find, it can't find my file. It says my file's missing and I don't know where it is. I don't know what happened to it. Well, I do know what happened to it and I also know how you can keep it from happening. So what I wanna do is talk, uh, break this into four things. The first one will be about the power of the library module and how I think most people don't use it the way that it was intended and uh, really uh, use the power that it has and the reasons why. I mean, there's some good reasons why. Second, I'll talk about some shortcuts and some other things in navigating the library module, I think, which will be helpful. Some you certainly know about, but maybe some others don't know about them. Then I'm going to just go through my structure itself and talk about the naming conventions and kind of how I do things. And finally, I'll do a couple of quick little demos about how I use the power of the library module to navigate my files and folders through uh, that structure. Now, I'm a little bit different shooter than uh, most people, and there's a hundred ways to do this. There's no right way to organize your files. But the idea here is that, you know, kind of look at what I do and maybe look at it on a macro level and say, well, yeah, hey, that would work for me or that idea would work for me. Uh, I do encourage you to listen a little bit about the library module itself because uh, it's really important and I've been doing it this way for five years. So I do know that it can, it works and it can be trusted. And at least at that point, you might find that it's worth, uh, worthwhile listening to. So let's just jump into that to start with. Okay. So my philosophy is, uh, the library module is actually a very, very powerful dam digital asset manager. Now it's certainly they're not most, not the most powerful one out there. There are some that are way more powerful, but those are generally designed for enterprise level systems that have millions of files, millions of media uh, documents that they need to manage. But Lightroom is really very powerful. And if you're going to let a digital asset manager, manage your assets, you've got to do it 100% of the time. You can't do it part of the time. Now, what most people do is they, they go back and forth between the Finder or Explore on Windows, and they work their files, and they move things around, and they go back into Lightroom. And if you do that, you're, you're, you're just going to run into problems. Lightroom is perfectly capable of doing everything you need to do with those files and folders that the Finder or Explorer is. There's only one thing it can't do, and we'll get to that in a second and the reason why. But... If you let Lightroom manage your entire uh, asset, just from the very time you put your card in and you import it, I know most people, they drag, copy them over from their card and they think it's faster or most of them think it's more dependable. And now you've just added some steps you've still got to do in Lightroom. And I promise you, if you do it the way that I do it, I've got a whole video about that and I'll link it up here. If you do it the way I do it, it's actually, it'll save you time. So why do people want to do those things in the Finder? Well, there's this feeling that we have, we're so ingrained that we think our files live in the Finder or they live in Explorer. And when you really look at the way a computer's structured, the files and the whole disk structure is, is down on the hard disk drive. And that has to go through uh, the hardware layer, it's gotta go through the uh, kernel, it's gotta go through the operating system, gotta go up through the graphical interface. And Lightroom and Finder, and Explore, those are all applications that just sit on top of this big stack. And 
they just send a basic command down to the computer through the kernel to do a certain task. And Lightroom is capable of sending the exact same set of instructions. It's just a graphical interface. I mean, I could go into the terminal and I could still type out by hand and I could move all those files just like we did before we had graphical interfaces. I'm not even sure that the, the kernel down in the bottom level really knows which program gave it the instructions and I do know it doesn't care. All it knows is this application asked for this file to be done moved here or copied here or renamed here. It's asked for this folder to be created. Lightroom can do that just as well and just as uh, dependably as the Finder. And because you're doing it in Lightroom, you can't lose it. The most common problem I have, let me give you the worst case example I've added. Somebody called me and says that their Lightroom library is a total mess. And so I went over there and we're trying, they're trying to find literally thousands of files. And so I said, well, how did this happen? Said. Well, a few days ago, I decided I wanted to organize things and get them all fixed up. So I went into the finder and I got everything moved around and got it where I wanted. I says, well, so now the problem is you've got to tell Lightroom about all that. Now, you know how hard that is? Even if you move a handful of folders and stuff. And the real problem is to do it in the finder is way, way harder than doing it in Lightroom. If you've got your folder in Lightroom, you can see your images really well. You know exactly what they are. And if you decide you're going to move them to a different drive, or if you decide you're going to delete some of them, it's way better. Now, if you go into the Finder and delete them, Lightroom still thinks they're there. But if you delete them from Lightroom, it'll throw them in the trash just like the Finder will. There's nothing magic or special about the Finder or Explorer. It's not safer. It's not more reliable. In fact, it's less reliable because you will end up with problems in your Lightroom library. So if you let Lightroom manage your assets from the from the very beginning when you ingest them into your computer from your card all the way through, I never do anything with my files in the Finder. Just never. Now, there are times where I'm going to export a file that I'm going to do something with, and that's going to go somewhere else, but I don't have it in Lightroom anymore. Uh, you know, for example, if I'm going to make something to put on Instagram, I'm just going to make a little export file. And it actually goes in a folder I call temporary files. It sits on my desktop. About once a month, I take that folder. I copy it off to a hard drive with a date on it, create a new one that says temporary files. And if I don't need to go get one of those files within a month or two, then I throw that other one I copied off into the trash. Well, if we let Lightroom manage everything and we trust it, uh, it makes our life easier. And that's how my structure evolved. Uh, I really, I'm really passionate about this because I've had so many people call me and say, oh, I can't find my files as well, because why would you, why bother going over to the finder to rename something? Why bother in the finder to go move something from one hard drive to another? It's actually easier on a Mac anyway. It's easier to move a, f a folder from one hard drive to another in Lightroom because when you drag it over, it automatically moves it for you. It moves it and deletes the original. On, in the finder, you've got to hold the command key down to do it because by default, when you drag it, it simply copies it for you. And most people don't even know that you can you can use the command key to move it. So what they'll do is they'll copy it over and then they got to go back and delete it. Well, that's way too much work. So I encourage you to try this, to trust the library module. Uh, another really good example before we move on, the most common mistake a new person makes with Lightroom is that they think they've got to get all their files organized so they're nice and neat before they get them into Lightroom. And so they'll get Lightroom and then they'll be weeks trying to before they can actually start using it. That's just the opposite of what you should do. What you should do is just start your library and suck everything in and then organize it all within Lightroom. If you got photos spread around across like 10 hard drives, the best thing to do is just go import everything and then you can delete them from there. You can wipe them from your hard drive. You can move them from one to the other and consolidate them. You can make new folders and organize them. You can rename them. You can do everything. Now, there's only one thing that you can't do in Lightroom that you can do in the Finder, and that's delete an actual folder. You can delete everything that's inside the folder that Lightroom knows about, but it won't let you delete the folder. And it seems odd, but there's a reason for that. That's because Lightroom doesn't know about everything that's in could be in that folder. For example, you might have an Excel spreadsheet in a folder that keeps track of something related to the file. Well, Lightroom doesn't know anything about that. 
So it says, if you're going to delete a folder, you need to go over into the Finder or over and ex explore and do it because that way you can at least look inside it and make sure there's not something else before you throw it away. But it's really not a problem because you can go to it, just a, a right click and boom, you're in that folder and you can delete it. And once you delete it, you go back to the Lightroom, there's a question mark and then you just uh, remove it from Lightroom. So that's the only thing you can't do. You can copy files, you can move files, you can uh, make new folders, you can do all that within Lightroom. So anyway, let's uh, right now, let's ju jump in and take a look at some of the little shortcuts that Lightroom has as, as far as the library module. Just let me show you a few quick things that some of you might not know about. And we'll, we'll get into part two here. Okay, I have the video all finished. And uh, as I was editing through it, I realized it got a little longer than I like to do for a YouTube video. And this seemed to be the only logical place to split it. So this first part is just talks about my... Uh, learning curve to really understand and appreciate the library module and really the whole curve is not about learning and it. it's just about trusting it and appreciating it and so i thought okay we'll cut it here and i'll have part two out in a couple of days and in that part we'll talk about navigating the library module shortcuts and things you could use my actual structure including how i name files why i name them the way i do and how that kind of helps with the, the navigation part ties in with that and then finally, I'm gonna just show how I actually move files and folders through my workflow using uh, Lightroom from hard drive or SSD to, to another SSD, another folder, and that'll kind of show the whole thing. So make sure you hit the subscribe down there and, and hit that notification bell, and that way when I get part two out, uh, you'll get notified. I, I promise it'll only be a day or two, I've almost got it done. And until next time, see ya.